Yeah, you can off your mic, please. Okay, class. Uh, let's take a look uh, to the uh, diagram on how is how it goes. Uh. So uh, we are st uh, still in the chapter four three vehicle. Uh. Okay, let's take a look. Huh? We are still in a trade vehicle. So in the very beginning, uh, huh? uh, basically, uh, we target uh, Strawaka. Huh? Strawaka could be layman and also uh, could be uh, uh, the monk also. Huh? So it's a trade vehicle. And then after the trade, uh, 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 in the very beginning, we understand that the stage of uh, uh, the, the different style of the people. Huh? Then we go to the stage two. Stage two is about, I mean, the main theory is regards what the three training and eight noble, eight full path. Okay, so that is the chapter stage. Well, stage two, stage three is regards the four noble truth and the law dependent origination. So we have gone through this. So class, remember the core for the three vehicle is about the four noble truth, meaning to say number one now. We all have a suffering, and we have we got the type of suffering, and the main suffering is caught is due to you have the body, okay? Huh? So, uh, what is the cause uh, by having this uh, body and mind is due to the ignorance and also the attachment, okay? Huh? Then, uh, what is the solution? That will be the eightfold path. Uh, so, we are mentioning, uh, so we have gone through, okay? We will we'll come back again. Actually, now we are in the eightfold path. Huh? And then, uh, what is the? Uh, and then, what is the? Uh, what is the consequence? Uh, I mean, uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, what is the outcome? That will be the nibbana. Uh, so that is the main main core teaching. Uh, in this uh, four noble truth. Okay. Uh, then uh, we finish here. Okay. Uh, then, then let's. Uh, I sorry, I go to on. Uh, on my fan first. Uh, Okay, let's continue. Okay, then we go to the stage three. That will be the trade training. Okay, and the noble eight four path. The trade training basically is the training of the morality. So, class, if you remember, we talk about how the morality quite deep for the lay uh, for the monk and the layman. Uh. Then the training of the mind is about the samadhi. Uh. Okay, uh, if you can recall, uh, uh, basically the samadhi uh, is about the anapanasati and the akzuba. Uh, they both are important. And then uh, we got seven jhana, uh, it's dependent jhana. Uh. So we, we, we have to achieve these seven in order, I mean, to practice the vipassana. Okay. So that is, uh, uh, that is uh, the training of the mind. Uh. Then uh, later on is the training of the wisdom. Okay. Uh. Then uh, we go to the Noble Eightfold Path. So uh, in, in the Noble Eightfold Path, actually we are beginning here, we are still here. Huh? It's regarding the right understanding, uh, it's regarding the right view. Huh? So class, uh, in the right view, basically, huh, uh, we come back again, it's, it's to the Paticca Sambhupada. Huh? Uh, the Paticca Sambhupada, uh, why it is so important, the reason is, uh, from Paticca Sambhupada, we understand that, uh, the rules and regulation, uh, uh, I mean, uh, what is the cause and condition uh, for the reincarnation? That is the main causes. Okay, uh, so uh, this is discovered by Shakyamuni, okay, uh, Patricia Sambhupada, including the past life, present life, and the future life. Uh, so this is the Patricia Sambhupada. Uh, uh, one uh, very famous verse is, uh, uh, Due to the ignorance, there is a formation, mental formation. Okay, once it exists, this also exists. So, once this, I mean, uh, uh, disappeared, then that also disappeared. So that is the core, uh, the rules and regulation apply to the Paticca Sambhubada. Okay, uh, then uh, now we come back here uh, to verse number nine, uh, nine is. 96. Uh, but besides this, uh, uh, in the previous lesson, uh, uh, 
what we learn is uh, a Patija Samupada is so important uh, uh, to eradicate the wrong will. Why? Because uh, you see, uh, class, this will it shows that everything is in the continuity, continuation. Meaning to say that, for example, past life and the present life. Okay. Uh, well, uh, 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 sometimes we will say that uh, past life and the present life, okay, uh, uh, if, uh, for example, there's a one day, uh, a thief, uh, a stolen certain thing and got caught okay huh? so uh, he was under the judgment uh, by the judge huh? so the judge said that uh, why do you steal he asked the thief okay huh? then the thief claims that no you shouldn't punish me the thief said huh? you had why you shouldn't punish me the reason is because huh? okay now you catch me but the guy who thief is the yesterday that's yesterday guy, not today me you see or not Okay, uh, it's, it's gone already, you see. So meaning to say that, uh, uh, you shouldn't punish me. So that is the tip claim that. Okay. So Yong Sin, if you are the judge, uh, how are you going to argue with this tip? Uh? But you still remember it's you. Uh. Again, what? Uh? You still remember it's you are still Lima. Uh? I remember myself. Uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, basically, yes, I, I know, but the previous me is not same now me, you see? <laughs> this is yesterday me, you know. Oh, now me is a different already. So how can you penalize me? You should penalize the yesterday me. But the yesterday me gone already. Oh. But everyone still thinking you are the same people, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Lah. Actually, uh, here uh, one point is, uh, it seems that like yesterday is different with I mean, uh, with, with today, the you, uh, that's true, but, but it's the different, but it is related. Uh, that in, in, in philosophy, there's one very famous analogy that uh, a river never soak same, uh, same food. Why? You see, uh, once uh, you put your food on the river, in, into the river, you see, uh, okay, then you pull out your, 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 uh, your food, okay. Then, secondly, when you try to soak your uh, 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 your foot again because the river is keep on moving right so meaning to say that we, we call it uh, one river ne never soak two foot uh, because the river is, is keep on moving and moving or uh, every second okay so second time once you put your foot uh, that is other river already why because the river is keep on passing by it's very famous uh, analogy to prove that the uh, river itself is different every minute so for us, we are also different every minute, every second. But the reason is they are related. Ah, uh, they are related. So that's why uh, I still have to catch you because without yesterday you, how where is present you? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> so I have to penalize you so that the future you won't do it again. <laughs> so actually, uh, uh, this type of uh, thief is a, a smart thief. Uh, so we use this analogy to understand how uh, Bopatija Samubada Past life and this life is closely related, but they are different, but they are related. Okay, uh, so that is the Patricia Sambada. Let us understand there is a continuity because uh, for some, uh, I mean, uh, the non, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, for some non Buddhists, uh, uh, they believe that uh, uh, once you die, okay, uh, so your next life is unrelated to you, you uh, or maybe there's no more next life. Ah, no more next life. And some will claim, claim that the past life and present life is a different, total, is a totally different uh, entity. Literally, is totally different. But no, okay, huh? because uh, Buddha wisdom see things differently. You notice that actually there is some uh, relationship. But for us, uh, even though there's a, uh, there's a relationship, uh, huh? but uh, we cannot remember uh, the past life. Okay, oh. and uh, and basically, uh, uh, we can only uh, uh, prove that uh, there's something to do with the past, like, especially uh, if the kids, uh, uh, with the, for example, maybe the kids just one year old or, or maybe less than one year old, then he got some cancer, uh, leukemia, all this thing. And you ask doctor, doctor say, oh, that's a genetic me. Uh, they can also cannot explain. They always say that, oh, one out of one million, and it's a genetic problem. So why, why, why we got this genetic problem? Uh, so from here, basically, from this case, uh, because the child uh, is too young uh, to commit any heavy crime. So the only thing uh, we can find is uh, must be something to do with the past life. Uh, 
So from this type of case, uh, we can prove, uh, I mean, uh, we inherit uh, whatever in the past life to, to, to the present life. Uh, okay. okay, let's continue uh, today uh, uh, with this uh, number 96. Kamling, can you read the passage? Such was taught by the Buddha, dependent origination from the perspective of the uh, middle way is not attached to the view of uh, it's not attached to the view of either assistance or non-assistance. One can be liberated with such right understanding. I will stop. Uh, never mind. Uh, sorry, how? Huh? Okay, class. Can you please uh, try uh, try to repeat yourself the elements uh, huh, for the Padika Samubada, maybe for three times. If you can you can remember, it's good. You try to memorize it. Okay. Once you finish, please raise them by Zoom. One people finish. Two people finish. Okay, half of you finished ready. Yes, Kamlin, please proceed to the reading. Okay, the teaching. Uh, you can lower your hand, please. Okay, the teaching. The teaching discussed above was taught by the Buddha in the Agama Sutra and elsewhere, and is called dependent origination from the perspective of the middle way. The middle way is true, just without deviation and detached from the two extreme of deviant views. The contemplation of the middle way is the Buddha Dharma, which comes from the true contemplation of dependent originations, is the Buddha's fundamental stand in teaching the, teaching the Dharma. Therefore, true contemplation is also called the contemplation of the mean, and the true Dharma is also called the Dharma of the mean. In order not to fall into the two extreme, uh, extremists, all the sutras rely on the description of the sentient beings themselves, which are born and die in accordance with dependent origination. Dependent origination does not fall into the two extreme, extremes, unlike the imagination of sentient beings who are attached to the extremists. This is, this is in accord with the Buddha's teaching. The life is identical to the body, it's not what a person who practices 
Uli Dix who say that life is entirely different from the body is also not what a person who practices Uli Dix would say. One's mind should not follow these two extremists, but should go truly towards the middle way. Dependent origin, origination causes birth, aging and death, causes ignorance and in turn causes action. This is the middle way of dependent origination, which is neither the same nor different. It is uh, also said, thinking there is self-creation and self-reception, one falls into an uh, eternalism. Thinking there is creation by another and reception by another, one falls into nihilism. Departing from the two extremes of subject and object, one should stay on the middle way and preach the Dharma, which is to say, when this exists, that exists. Again, it is said, if one thinks there was a self first, that is eternalization. Uh, eternalism. If one thinks that at present, the self is annihilated, that is nihilism. The Tagagata preaches that uh, the Dharma which stays away from the two extremes. The so-called when this is, when this event exists, that event exists. All these are the middle way with neither eternalism nor nihilism. This view of the middle way based on dependent origination is a most important teaching of the Buddha. Okay, thank you so much.
Sally top up please once to finish uh. okay thank you so much okay let's take a look class uh, basically uh, uh i think i explained just now huh, uh, uh, i mean what, uh, what we mentioned here you see okay class uh, remember how huh, uh this is uh the teaching of both uh, was taught in the agama sutra okay actually agama sutra is originated from Savastivada. Huh? so in the Theravada nowadays they use a different name, so there is a different uh, heritage. Uh, we call it as the Nikai. Yeah. Uh, so class always remember uh, uh, we can do comparison between the Nikai and the Agama. Okay. Uh, so uh, class, you can just write down this is the Agama and the Nikai. Uh, you can, uh, I mean, Nikai and Agama. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got all this class. No need to shop. <laughs> all is freely distributed, and I got it. Oh, so big buck. Ah, okay. Oh. <laughs> as thick as the yellow page from of telephone, like a telephone yellow page. As thick as uh, I think maybe around four or five yellow page. <laughs> not people, but not people. Uh, no people use the yellow page anymore. Oh. Okay, no need to buy huh, if you want it. Huh? Okay, uh, so please write down. Okay, this is the Agama. It's originated from Sawastiwada. Wait, wait, let's see first. Then one more is the Nikaya. Nikaya is from where? It's from the Terawada. Huh? You can just write it down. Huh? Okay. Next time, if you met the Terawada devotee, huh, you can share with them that, oh, uh, we also got Agama from Sawastiwada. Huh? Our agama in uh, our, uh, uh, the agama is only available in the in the uh, Kaisho Tripitaka, which is hundred volume, and is is and, and in Mandarin, uh, and it is in Chinese. Uh, it is from different school of thought uh, for the agama, uh, whereas the Nikaya solely from the Taoya Timsa only. Uh, okay, uh, so this is the terms of. Uh, Because we don't really go through the class of history of Buddhism, uh, Elena, just now I mentioned all the different school names. Do you feel familiar with it? Are you familiar with it? What Taoya Timsa Sawastiwada? Are you familiar with it? Familiar, right? Oh, familiar, huh? But can you repeat it, the name? You struggle, to, you're, you're struggling to on the mic, right? Yeah. Nikaya. Ah. So, what the? Ah. Uyak Timsa. Every time you, when during class you mention it, I can remember. Okay. But, uh, uh, the full meaning of it, no. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. Just roughly no. Lah. Okay. Oh. So, that one uh, all is uh, from the history of Buddhism. Uh, okay. Okay, so class, uh, then we come back here again. Uh, uh, why are we talk about the dependent origination? There's a way, uh, one word we call it the middle way. Huh? Let's take a look. Middle way, contemplation of the mean. Huh? So, contemplation of the mean uh, is what in Mandarin? Uh, yu hua, uh? Zhongguan. Yes, that's true. Please write it down the words. This is very famous. Zhongguan. Huh? Okay, let me use the abbreviated Chinese word. Uh. Zhongguan. Okay, Zhongguan. Uh, so this is the middle contemplations. Okay, ho. Then middle way is a Zhong Tao. Uh, ho. Is this a uh, ho? Uh, you 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 got to know ho. Uh, for English act people. Huh? So this is the contemplation of mean. Uh, this is the contemplation of the middle, huh? middle way. Huh? They, are, they are very famous as due to the Nagajuna. Huh? Because Nagajuna, eh, sorry, huh? because uh, Nagajuna, huh? uh, Nagajuna is enlightened from the sutra uh, regards to Patija Sambubada. Huh? So he suggests that. Huh? Uh, by practicing the dependent origination, you are able to find 
the middle way. Zhong Guan, Zhong Dao. Ha. So here, the, the middle contemplation, remember, the contemplation means what? Means the Vipassana. Actually, that is the experience of Vipassana. But when we explain it verbally, it becomes a Zhong Dao, Zhong Lun. Ha. When we explain verbally, huh? until why we create as a middle way? Why middle? Because it doesn't go to the both of the extreme. Huh? Okay, finish writing. Ah, the man is okay. Huh? Yes. So let's take a look. Why this uh, Chung Guan Chung Tao uh, 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 is so important in Nagarjuna? It's come from here, you see. Okay, basically, a uh, class. Uh, once we mention that, uh, huh? Like just now we mentioned, uh, uh, we got two extreme. What is what are the two extreme? Because uh, if you think that this life and that life is totally different, so this is one of the extreme. So this is the past life. This is the present life. If you thought the past life and present life they are totally different, there is one of the extreme. Okay. Then uh, we have a different way to uh, to, to, to put the situation. Uh, for example, uh, uh, either you fall in eternalism if you don't practice the middle way, or the nihilism. Nihilism means what? Nihilism meaning to say that when you die, there's no more present life. It's totally unrelated. Some nihilism mentioned that once this life, uh, once you die, there's no more next life. So nihilism uh, make people people become how to say uh, unscrupulous because uh, since there's no more next life just do whatever you want uh. am i right oh i just do whatever you like because no 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 next life meaning to say no there's no somebody to i mean uh, uh to to it's, ob it's obliged to what you do uh. Uh, we'll be uh, we, uh i mean now uh, we carry the responsibility for you so for us uh, we believe that oh if we if you do any bad but did so next life still we ourselves have to responsible for it even though we forget you see so meaning to say that you still will be very very careful for this life you see so this is we call eternalism that uh, uh any what let's say anihilism uh, let's see here now uh, here mm, yeah, this one uh, uh, nihilism okay uh, then uh nihilism uh, the self is uh, uh, annihilated now uh. then uh, there is other extreme is uh, eternalism eternalism it means what meaning to say that uh your past life and the present life will be exactly the same that is the eternalism meaning to say that if uh, there's an eternalism uh, whatever how hard you you cultivate uh, you won't change anything uh. for example in the brahmanism i mean uh, for the course for caste system in indian okay uh, they separate them the indian themselves uh, to the brahma okay huh? then the uh, sastra and then chatria are uh, four kasta huh? so uh, 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 in hinduism uh, if you are the brahmanism you will remain as a brahmanism forever and you if you are the uh, sastra or sutra uh, then you will remain as the same so that is the eternalism uh, but for buddhism everything can change since everything is subject to change and subject to condition, meaning to say that through cultivation, we can from a mandate person to become a sage. So that is the difference. Uh, so here is the meaning here. Uh, why we, we use the word uh, nihilism and eternalism. Uh, okay, and then here we come again. Uh, uh, again, the Cuban mentions stay away from the two extreme. And this even exists, and that event exists. So it's this even event exists, and that event exists. So uh, just write down. Uh, it's very famous. Uh, okay, for those who know the Mandarin, just write down. Uh, for Sally Elena, for English app people, if you feel quite burdens, quite burdensome, oh, so no need to write it. Lah. Okay, oh.
Elena, if your cousin come for your advice, uh, whether they should uh, study the Chinese in primary school, what will you advise? You, prefer, you advise them Chinese or English, uh, Elena? Nowadays, with China moving up so drastically, you should study Chinese. Okay, for the primary six, the first six in the vernacular school, uh, right? Then later on, uh, maybe go to international school or Chinese dependent school, it doesn't matter, like, huh? right? Something like that. Like, huh? mm, okay, huh? mm. not, not due to the regretful in Chinese or Buddhism no. learning. Nothing to do with that, Elena. <laughs> hey, if, if, if Elena and Celia, your Chinese is very good, like, maybe you wouldn't met me. Huh? My role is not that necessary already. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> I can play role because uh, you all are banana or uh, I try to deliver the message in, <laughs> in English or uh, <laughs> uh, hardly to say. Uh, that is the fate. Uh. Okay, let's keep on. Uh, have a look. Okay, finish. I'll write down this a few words. Uh. Okay, uh, class, can you check me again? The reference number 46. Can you check for me again? It is from the um, Agama. Uh, SA 32. Uh, 32. Uh, SA 32. Samyutta Agama. Okay, oh, Samyutta Agama. So it is so important. Oh. Uh, class, uh, basically, if you go to do the meditation, especially in Terawada, uh, they will design the meditation based on Patija Samubada. So no matter how, huh, I hope that you can uh, just uh, have some time, uh, spare some holiday, uh, go to experience the, I mean, uh, the meditation, uh, uh, understand it through the meditation, Patija Samubada. Okay, if in Thailand, uh, huh, there's one teacher, the name is Buddha Dasa, for them, 12 link and condition is within one top. So they will try to use this way to design their meditation. So meaning to say one thought uh, will contain 12 link and condition. Okay. But uh, if for, um, uh, uh, for in Myanmar, okay, so they will they will practice the Paduka Sabopada like the wheel just now you try to memorize. So meaning to say that you have to uh, uh, check your past life, what is the formation in your past life to make you become human this life. And, and, and then you have to check again this life, or what is the most heavy karma or habitual karma which would uh, determine your future life? So that's why, in order to check past life and future life, you must have the jhana, because of, because of without the strong the strength of the jhana, or oh, you are you are you are unable to penetrate through the past life, because our past life from this life to past life, uh, uh, present life to the uh, to the past life, uh, there is a gap there. You see. So this gap uh, is quite hard to penetrate without the jhana. So you need the jhana and the meditation skill from the Dharma master so you can penetrate through it. Some people even though they penetrate through, they notice that it, it seems uh, there's the three karma comes together. Uh, so they also be confused. Don't know which one uh, determine that become a human dislike. Maybe there's one image that appeared that uh, uh, it shows that uh, they always go to the temple learning the Dharma. Okay, they, maybe they will see the monk. The second image, uh, maybe uh, they do the dana, they, they do the donation, I mean, to repair the root, something like that. And the third one, maybe an image uh, is uh, they are uh, liberating the animal. So uh, they will confuse, hey, how come three images to know which one? So at that time, uh, your Dharma master, your meditation master is so crucial to help you to scrutinize which one in order to finish out uh, the Patika Samubada, which one mental formation cause a present life? See or not? Ah, a class, this is not psychic. Always remember that this is not psychic in Patika Samubada. Hmm. A psychic, of course, can check the past life, but it's different with this Vipassana. Okay. So uh, the, for those uh, who got the Nimitta, uh, uh, congratulations to you. You can easily, I mean, for you, uh, uh, from the Nimitta, you, 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 I mean, uh, you, you, you train your jhana a bit, uh, uh, and then easy for you to check your past life. Uh, uh, so Sally and Elena, please, uh, you can you try to, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, go together, uh, uh, see at uh, the Terawada, mostly they are English, English speaking, uh, uh, then you can just experience that. Uh. 
But I have to check first, uh, uh, if they need to sit very long, uh, uh, you need to ask, uh, you, are, you, are, uh, you, are in, uh, you you got wound, uh, uh, so whether they allow you or not. Uh. Because uh, in order to gain the first jhana, sometimes uh, they, they will request you to sit to two to three hours. Uh, so, so for Elena, I think it's very scary, uh, wow, two to three hours. <laughs> Almost die out. Uh. Okay, next paragraph. Uh, Amanda, please, can you please read the passage? Uh, the Buddha expounded this teaching to Sanda Katyayana, a great master who profoundly practiced extraordinary meditation and was not attached to any form. The Mulama Diya Maka Karina by Nagarjuna and the Yogacara Bhumi Sastra by Maitreya cited this teaching of the Agama Sutra to explain the true characteristic of all dharmas. The Buddha said to Kat Katyayana, people who cling to either existence or non-existence are confused. Speaking of his own holy disciples, he said, those who truly contemplate worldly accumulation will not have the worldly will of non-existence. Those who truly contemplate worldly extinction will not have the worldly will of existence. Katyayana. The Tadagata leaves behind the true two extremes and speaks from the middle way. This is what is called when this exists, that exists. When this appears, that appears. When this does not exist, that does not exist. When this ceases, that ceases. So people who do not understand dependent origination will remain confused, erroneously attached and unable to free themselves from the two extremes of existence and non-existence. When Buddhists truly contemplate according to dependent origination, the views of existence and non-existence should not arise. But when ordinary people see the birth of a human being, they insist that this is a real existence, and when a person dies, they insist this is a real non-existence. So they have the views of existence and non-existence. With regard to the transmigrations of birth and death, most ordinary people insist that this also is a real existence. Hearing about the ending of birth and death and the entrance to Nirvana, people mistakenly insist that this is non-existence. Okay, thank you so much.
Okay, class, let's take a look. You see, huh? here is still, uh, actually, it's, uh, this is repeat. Lah. Okay, the previous passage, the content is the same only. Huh? But class, let's take a look. You see, huh? here, you see, uh, if, 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 let's say, you understand the accumulation, uh, uh, because we mentioned there's a four noble truth, right? Okay, huh? four noble truth. So by knowing the accumulation, then this is the extinction. Extinction is noble truth of Ku It's the third one. Okay, the extinction. Okay, oh. This is the second one, Ji Di. Oh. By knowing the accumulation that then you won't have the worldly view of non-existence. Because uh, why? You see, class, because uh, if you understand that there is the ignorance and mental formation, so they must be got the next life. They must be the existent one. Okay, oh. And then if let's say you understand that there is the uh, worldly view of existence, uh, there is extinction. So uh, uh, ex we will not have the worldly view of uh, existence, you see. And once once we're able to see uh, uh, there is a nirvana, so you understand that they, they wouldn't have a worldly view of existence uh, because extinction will lead to, I mean, uh, non, uh, I mean, uh, 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 extinction meaning to say the nirvana. Then uh, finally, there is no more existence. So, so that is the point uh, with a different way to express uh, uh, this two extreme. You see, uh, uh, and this sutra is very famous. It's due to this uh, this monk, uh, Katyana, Sanda Katyana. So Sanda Katyana, uh, the sutra, especially, I mean, uh, uh, this sutra is very famous. Is uh, mentioned about the Paticca Samubhaga, oh. and uh, Sanda Kajana is very profound practice the meditation and was not attached to any form. Okay, oh. then uh, there's two more people also enlightened. Uh, I mean, inherit uh, the teaching from both of them. One is the uh, Nagarjuna. Oh. Um, the one in Mandarin Nagarjuna is Long Su Pusa. Mula Madhyamaka Karika is. Uh, Chong Lun. Ah, Chong Lun, uh, not Lun, uh. Then my Chia is Mila uh, Pusa. Yoga Chara Bumi Sastra. Uh, Lun. Ah, uh, Lun. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. So meaning to say that this are uh, made to these two major Mahayana school, they also enlightened by this Santa Katyana. So class always remember once we talk about the Mahayana in, in Indian. There is the Mula Madhyamaka Karika and also Yoga Charabumi. They are the real Mahayana. Uh, but but uh, nowadays, uh, we will say, oh, Mahayana it means what? Oh, we go to the temple, we do some chanting, so try some then we do some repentance, oh, then we claim ourselves as a Mahayana. Uh, no, in Indian, the definition is either Madhyamaka or Yoga Charabumi. Okay, always remember that's the definition uh, in the text. Uh, Okay, oh. And both of them will practice the Bodhisattva, the 52 stages of the Bodhisattva. But basically, I think uh, 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 because uh, we are too over, we focus on chanting uh, in the temple and also the Lame organization. So even though everybody claim all oh, Bodhisattva, but they don't know there's a 52 stages and they need three Mahakapa <laughs> to, I mean, to complete the Buddhahood. Oh, uh, so. <laughs> I think maybe it's good they don't know lah. When they know they have to rethink Oh, Bodhisattva. <laughs> Am I right? Oh, better they don't know Okay. So we finish here. Let's see. Uh, let me see. You see, uh, these two. Uh, I mean, uh, these two Mahayana texts. Uh, they are enlightened from the Agama Sutra. Explain the true characteristic of all the Dharma. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is uh, we have this. Uh, this one Mula Mademika Karika, the, the summary, uh, we are uh, we have uh, we are having the Thursday class uh, and talk about this Mademika. And tonight the class is regards this Yuga Chara Bumi Sastra by my, my triala. So only Yogwa attend both the class. Uh, the rest, the rest is still resting. <laughs> because it seems quite tough also. Uh, okay. Uh, Now we go to the next paragraph. Uh, Yong Sin, your turn to read. When Buddhists are how? When Buddhists truly contemplate according to dependent origination, the views of existence and non-existence should not arise. 
but when ordinary people see the birth of a human being, they insist that this is a real existence. When, and when a person dies, they insist this is a real non-existent. So they have the view of existent and non-existent. With regards to the transmigration of birth and death, most ordinary people insist that this also is a real existence. Hearing about the ending of birth and death and the entrance to Nirvana, people mistakenly insist that this is non-existence. Buddhists who rely on the middle way of dependent origination when they observe things see really extinction as liberation from birth and death and should not have the view of existence. This is because the nature of dependent origination is relative and illusory and cannot be established in the quiet extinction of nirvana. Moreover, because things can become extinct when a thing is produced, this is not a case of real existence. If it were real existence, the thing would not become extinct according to conditions. When one sees the rises of accumulation in the world of birth and death, one does not have the view of non-existence. This is because it is not the case that the illusory and conventional existence of dependent origination that does not exist at all. Also, since a thing can be produced, it is definitely not the case that there is real non-existence when the things becomes extinct. Besides, if one understand that when this exists, that exists, when this appears, that appears, then when something appears to arise, one will be aware of the continuous trans migrations of dependent origination. Then one will not hold that death is the end of everything and have the view of non-existence. And if one is liberated from birth and death, one will not cling to a real self being liberated. Hi, class. Are you confused with the existent, non existent? <laughs> Can I mention it? Actually, are you truly understand the existent, non existent or not? <laughs> or actually, you, you don't know how, how confused you are because no examination, never mind, just, <laughs> just kill the time. <laughs> Okay, of course, uh, uh, this is the deep part, uh, or actually this is the, um, not the tricky part, it's the, it's the death part, uh, I mean, uh, the essential part, and you really have to understand, uh, uh, theoretically, uh, how it works, work out, uh, uh. so next time, uh, uh, maybe, um, I would think it helps uh, during you do the, the meditation. Uh.
Oke, so classical look, see. You see, uh, uh, for the Buddhists uh, who truly contemplate the dependent origination, you shouldn't have the view of existence and non-existent. Okay, how do we understand it? You see, uh, for ordinary people, they insist that there is a real existence. I think uh, here is true. Uh, here, we feel we, we, are, we ourselves are very solid. Am I right? Uh, we feel ourselves very solid. So, yeah, this is a real existence. Uh, uh, how to prove that uh, uh, we are so attached to the self? Uh, maybe uh, there's a few instances uh, for, for, uh, for uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, there are a few circumstances can prove it. Number one is during meditation. Uh, some people, they meditate until the whole body disappeared. They will feel scared for the first time. Oh, because uh, we, uh, this is our home. We used to attach to it. Suddenly, the whole body disappeared. Then we feel scared. A second, maybe... Uh, uh, if we undergo the chronic disease, uh, uh, how should I put it? Uh, maybe uh, you affected cancer. Uh, and then once people, once the doctor announced, oh, you got a last stage cancer, fourth stage cancer, then you will be very scared because uh, uh, you don't know where will you go uh, without this, this body. Uh, so this we call it as a real existence. That's why after learning the Buddhism, uh, you know next line where you go, uh, either Western Pure Land or reborn as a human or whatever, so you feel calm, waiting the moment to come. Okay, so that's why uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it is proof that there is a real existence. You see, you know? okay, and then you see, uh, when a person die, they, they insist there is a real non-existent. Yes, uh, because uh, uh, for some people, uh, they believe uh, when they die, it's just like the fire in the candle have been put off, uh, put have been put out. Once the fire in the candle has been put out, then there will be no more with the fire. So once people die, it seems like the fire has been put out. They no more existent anymore. Okay. Uh, well, this uh, for uh, I think it is quite hard for us to understand because this perception is common now uh, in 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 some uh, in some non Buddhist uh, meditation group uh, in India. Uh, because their psyche is very limited, not, not as good as Shakyamuni. So the way they see it, once they pass away, it seems like a fire has been put out. Okay. Why I say so many okay? Huh? <laughs> okay, the next uh, okay again. Huh? Uh, this is a second instance of, with regards to the transmigration of the birth and death, most ordinary people insist that this also is a real existence. So people think that like, once there is a transmigration of birth and death, that's reincarnation, they think it is so true, you see. Uh, this is another type of the extreme. Uh, uh. And then hearing about ending a birth of the death uh, and entrance to Nirvana, they mystically insist there is a non-existent. Yeah, this is another extreme. Uh, basically, uh, if we advise people that, hey, you please uh, go to the, we, we, as a Buddhist, uh, we should try to go to Nirvana. People will feel scary. Because uh, Nirvana means what? They will think it might be annihilated. Oh, but Nirvana will be quite different with the uh, annihilated. Because Nirvana is the totally, total tariff eradication of the defilement and you will experience the eternal peace peace at that moment and no more reincarnation but some people will take mistakenly uh, insist that uh, this is something like a, uh, annihilate, annihilate, annihilation you see so that is these two things are uh, you have to really uh, differentiate it uh, so uh, so you shouldn't confuse uh, <laughs> Actually, I think it doesn't matter because it seems all of you not worry this question. <laughs> Am I right? I think none of you worry regards this. <laughs> uh, but maybe uh, if one day, uh, uh, maybe to, uh, through some uh, certain understanding, but I have to go through meditation or some reading, uh, you will suddenly realize, oh yes, uh, once, I, once we go to the Nirvana, uh, it seems quite similar with the annihilation. Uh, then you start to I mean, a worry, uh, these questions. Uh, now, no, uh, except there's the examination now. Uh. <laughs> Since this is the class without examination. 
<laughs> I think uh, once uh, you you off the zoom or uh, maybe less than five percent remain the brain. <laughs> so next week on the zoom again. <laughs> Correct or not, Elena? I think it's right. Uh. <laughs> okay, huh? Then next, uh, so here is actually same thing. Uh, I mean, repeat here, uh, huh? But in a different way here, you see. Because the nature of dependent origination is relatively illusory. Okay, please, uh, class, please understand then the nature of dependent uh, origination is relative. Relative meaning to say that you compare to other. Uh, uh, so we, we, why we call it relative? Because uh, it's under comparison. Second is illusory, meaning to say this is not the ultimate truth. Okay, huh? basically, ultimate truth. What is ultimate truth? Okay, huh? uh, for example, Nirvana is the ultimate truth. Okay, this is not the ultimate truth. Okay, next one is uh, this is the verse come again. See, when this exists, that exists. When this appear, that appear. Okay, this sentence uh, when this exists, that exists. When this appear, that appear. Uh, Sally, can you please try to you apply this sentence uh, to this diagram? Can you please? Uh, Sebi, can you try? Okay, is uh, when this assistant means if if you are if you have that craving, it, uh, then you crave for it, and then next life also is having the same thing. Uh, why, why is the that exists? Sebi, take a look to the diagram you see here. You see the screen. Ah, uh, I have. I have this. One. Oh, okay, you have. Okay, okay, yes. Once there's a craving, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, good, good, good. So once a craving exists, that exists. What is the that? What is the next from the craving? Attachment. Yes. So this exists and that exists. That meant the attached to it. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, and then uh, uh, one more example. When this appeared, that appeared. Good. One more example. One more example. For example, ignorance, uh, Sally, when ignorance appeared, what else will appear next? Mental formation. Yes, that's true. So that is the way. Okay, oh, it seems very simple, oh, but um, once you really go through it, oh, it, can, it can be more deep, oh, especially in Abhidhamma. Ah, you see, uh, Yogwa show the scary face. <laughs> Let's talk about Abhidhamma. Not scary face, serious face. <laughs> then you all, uh, uh, okay, once you start the Abhidhamma, you will understand, uh, you will show the serious face again. <laughs> like Yukwa, huh? okay. Huh? Okay, next paragraph, let's take a look. Ah, okay, huh? then we're not cling to the real self being liberated. No, it doesn't matter. Okay, we go to the next paragraph again. Huh? Let's see. Okay, you walk, can you please read the passage in sum? Huh? In sum, everything originates dependently. There is no real self or real thing. So the real of existence does not arise. Without real selves and real things, the real of non existence also does not arise. Truly contemplating uh, dependence origination, free of attachment to the views of existence and non-existence. One attains reparations, both the superior study of wisdom, the profound prana, and the right understanding of the eight flow, right path, are the contemplation of the dependently originated middle way. Therefore, Buddhists can be detached from, from a permanent eternal self without falling into the biased views of nihilism and eternalism, identity and difference, existent and non-existent, thereby breaking through ignorance and becoming liberated from birth and death. Okay, never mind. Stop here first. Okay, huh? 
I want to I, no, 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 stop here. The, okay, let me finish this paragraph. Huh? Okay, class. Um, uh, dependent, uh, dependent originations. Uh, the Mandarin is the Yuan Qi. Once you do the chanting, you have, a, I mean, uh, you have the opportunity always uh, to mention these two words, uh, even though in the Mahayana text. Please write down uh, dependent origination. Uh, Yuan Qi. Uh, Okay, class, let's take a look. Uh, see here. Uh, here, uh, uh, the, the Yuan Xia, uh, dependent origination, always relate to superior study of wisdom, profound prashnya, right understanding. So we know that this is so important. Huh? Uh, one, if you really truly understand it, you will detach it from the permanent and eternal self. Huh? Oh, okay, huh? okay, class, uh, basically, you have to make, make it clear that this is about the liberation. So this type of theory uh, um, cannot really solve the problem, your personality problem in your career. Uh, uh, if, if during your, your pressure in the career, you have to settle by other way. Uh, here is more on the, I mean, the problem for the liberation. Uh, this is more long-term planning. So this is the second, the second, emphasis, uh, second emphasis of the uh, dependent origination. Okay, so can you, can you check for me in what verse Previously, we discussed about the dependent origination. Can you check for me? What verse is this? Hmm. Now it's the second time. Second, uh, this. Uh, I mean, this is the second emphasis. What is the first, the number one emphasis regarding the dependent origination? Uh, what's no, sixty-five? Got one. Sixty-five. Can, can you please check for me? Huh? You walk, how can you find it so fast? Huh? I just fit through. I and then came the first. Oh, okay, Kim. Please confirm to me the rest. 65. 65 is the first mention. Now it's the second mention, right? Okay, this cross reference. So you know that, oh, it had been mentioned twice in this, I mean, um, three vehicle. So meaning to say it is so important. Oh. But uh, basically, once we do our Mahayana text chanting, uh, more emphasize on the sixth parami. So basically, uh, uh, this uh, uh, Yuan Qi, uh, 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 maybe uh, once in a while you will know that it doesn't go deep mm. but uh, for this uh, but the author insists that uh, before I proceed to the Mahayana you should you should I mean uh, you should you, you, you should you should equip yourself with the three vehicle four noble truth eight noble path then you have a strong fundamental I mean uh, to continue with the six pyramid or your six pyramid will be something uh, without a solid foundation so that is the meaning for this. Okay, uh, so uh, okay.
okay we stop here so next lesson we will begin with the right understanding of the four noble truth oh, so we are uh, so i i think uh, uh can you check for me how many pages uh, we finished the class uh, 